Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Tom Spark. Welcome back to another VPN review. Today, of course, we're checking out Surfshark. Now, right now, you'll see on the website, Surfshark has a uh, kind of a deal going on. But keep in mind that throughout the year, Surfshark usually has some kind of deals going on. Um, and it's going to be probably similar. If you guys want the best price on Surfshark, you will click the link in the description down below. It should get you the best current deal going on. And I'm sure they have some kind of deal going on right now. But today we're doing an objective review of Surfshark to see how it scores in my 4.0 rating system. This is a very objective review. We're going to be rating it down to the centrals and points. How does it compare to something like NordVPN, which is a sister company, or maybe even something like Atlas? On guys here, I would be very uh, skeptical when watching some other content here on YouTube. Um, there are a couple different channels that really, really like to promote some of these sister brands like Surfshark, Nord, and Atlas. And some of these channels, they really only talk about those products and barely talk about anything else just promote them as much as possible. So I would be careful watching some other reviews here on YouTube, uh, just to be, um, when you watch those reviews, think about them critically. But here we're actually gonna be critical and discuss you know, what it needs to improve and what it doesn't do perfectly um, because it doesn't do anything perfectly, no VPN does. But if we talk about the price, you know, how does it do in terms of price? Well, Surfshark, like a lot of other VPNs, is pretty expensive month to month, so I'm not a huge fan of that. Six months there isn't a plan, and you do get a pretty good plan for yearly. It's around $48, but then it does increase to $60 year after year per that. I do like how Surfshark's being pretty transparent with that, listing the price very clearly, and it's not a horrible price to increase the price up. That said, some VPNs like TorGuard on the channel, when using my promo codes, you do get that same price every time, every year, ever since you use the promo code. So, I mean, Surfshark could do it better and just have it, if you sign up for $48 at 12 months, every time 12 months after that, it would be $48. That would be my preferred way to do it, um, but it's not the worst in the world here. Um, so we're gonna give him points for uh, two years as well. It's around $60 for 26 months, which is actually a really good deal. Um, and then after that, it's $60 a year after you that. We don't give him any points for the three-year plan because they don't really have one going on right now. They do have a 30-day refund policy and unlimited simultaneous connections. So in some ways, Surfshark's actually priced better than Nord. Um, in terms of that, um, giving you unlimited simultaneous connections and being a little bit cheaper. And in some ways that it kind of offers a similar kind of capability. But that's what we're gonna be talking about next. We're gonna be talking about the application. You know, how does um, um, something like Surfshark compare to something like Nord? How does it compare to some other VPNs? Well, the application's pretty nice. I think it could use a little bit more pop and pizzazz. Um, I specifically hate the light mode. I feel like it does hardly any contrast at all. It just makes my eyes completely um, get annihilated. But the dark mode works fine and it looks fine. It's just a little basic in my opinion. I think it could use a little bit more of a better look to it, but that's not really part of our rating system because a lot of that is kind of subjective. But if we're talking about what it could improve, um, you know, it doesn't have DNS controls specifically to put some kind of DNS in there that you want to do. Um, the good news is it has a Linux GUI, which NordVPN does not have, but NordVPN does have SOX5 proxy support and dedicated IPs you could put in the application where Surfshark doesn't have those things. Um, additionally, Nord has the remote VPN capability with mesh routing kind of thing they have, which is cool if you want to remote into your local network with Nord. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, but the good news is that Surfshark does have WireGuard, kill switches, and um, Surfshark does have some interesting things about it that aren't really part of my review system. For example, it has kind of like an easy way to search with Surfshark search, um, as well as data breach alert. Although I do believe some of these things are extra paid features, which I'm not a huge fan of. Um, WeVPN does offer their own alert thing very similarly, but doesn't charge extra for it. Um, that said, we do have things like multi-hop, which are nice and kind of some cool kind of bypasser things like this, which kind of is kind of like split tunneling. Um, as well as plenty of protocols to select, which is nice. Um, and also rotating IP, which is cool, um, as well as kind of stealth VPN. Um, so overall, they do have a pretty beefy application and it's gotten pretty good. I remember when I first reviewed it a long time ago, it definitely needed a lot of work, but it's come a long way since then. And it's a pretty good application. Um, the main advantage over Nord, I would say, is it has a Linux GUI, um, but Nord over than that, they're pretty similar actually. I do think I do prefer Nord's interface a little bit more now since I did update it recently. So Nord has a really nice interface. Now we can talk about the speed test. How is it going to perform? Well, if it gets anywhere from five to 700, in my opinion, that's very fast um, because I usually get those speeds with the fastest VPNs. Um, so that's what we're going to be looking for. And there we go. Nord uh, Surfshark is actually doing exceedingly well. 800 is very, very strong. 
And that's something you're gonna notice with Nord and Surfshark both that they have amazing speeds. They have the money, they have the server network, 50 plus server locations and amazing speeds. So this is really, really nice. I just reviewed private internet access yesterday and this is doubling those speeds, which weren't bad. But yeah, Surfshark, really good job here in terms of speeds, no complaints at all. Now in terms of Surfshark, the privacy, how does it do? Well, unfortunately, not too well. This is very similar to Nord in that these companies are privacy companies. They do not collect blogs or anything like that. Um, however, you gotta kind of go the extra mile if you wanna look good. And that's what Nord and Surfshark are having a hard time doing. They ran more like businesses and not so much like privacy companies. If you're a privacy company, in my opinion, you should have no ad trackers or no cookies on their website. And these companies are clearly taking some kind of data, optimizing the sale funnel or something like that. And it's not a good look. Nine ad trackers and 10 cookies is crazy. It also tells Facebook when you visit the website and they use Google Analytics. And they also have trackers and stuff like that on their applications like Android. So that's definitely something that can be improved. Uh, if there was one thing about Surfshark and Nord that I would want to be improved the most, this would probably be it. I think they should really uh, optimize this and get rid of this stuff. It would probably hurt their business, so I'm not sure they're willing to do that. Um, other VPNs are willing to kind of sacrifice some of that marketing data in order to optimize privacy of the back end, and I would like to see Surfshark do that as well. The good news is Surfshark doesn't really have any history of data leaks or anything like that. In the past, I'd kind of docked them a little bit of points because since there was kind of some um, vulnerability on um, an application level, but there was not necessarily any data leak and it wasn't really that big of an issue. So I'm just kind of going to leave that in the past. And if you want to look that up, you could. Um, but I just think to be completely fair, it's not necessarily a huge data scare, data leak or anything like that. Another thing is that Surfshark was kind of interestingly founded. I guess like Tesonet is a kind of a Lithuanian incubator huge tech company and it kind of started nordvpn and nordvpn kind of became its own kind of thing although the people who own testanet are also kind of like this the the founders of nordvpn and then at that time they also kind of founded surfshark or incubated it or something like that and then the companies have always been very similar and then at some point they decided to kind of like merge, even though they were kind of both incubated and started by the same company. So definitely kind of confusing there and not as transparent as I would like to see it from a history of a company like this, but they are more transparent now about being um, at least a simple sister company of Nord and Atlas all under the branch of something like Tessanet. So at least there's that, but they are now as that. Um, the good thing about Surfshark is they they do have a more transparent leadership now. You could find information about the CEO, which I like, and they have third-party audits as well. So at least there's that. In terms of the privacy more related to the application, however, I would like to see open source with Surfshark. Now, it's not the most important thing in the world sometimes for VPN because some VPNs prioritize stealth technologies. And if you open source that, it makes it easier to block but it is a transparent thing I would like to see with Surfshark especially, so that would be nice to see. Going into the rest of the review, guys, we could kind of wrap things up. Customer support with Surfshark is very good. They actually respond to my tickets usually within one hour um, if you get them at the right time and always under 24 hours too, which is exactly what we want here on the channel. Surfshark especially, I really like how they've never actually come after my videos and tried to threaten, harass, or otherwise legally harass me um, for my videos on them, even if they have been critical. Um, I can't always say the same for other companies out there. Um, so I really like that about Surfshark and Surfshark, if you're watching this, I really appreciate that. Um, and finally going into streaming, Surfshark is a very good VPN for streaming, probably using the same kind of residential network or proxy network as something like NordVPN is doing. Whatever the case there, it's very strong for streaming and unblocks pretty much any kind of geo restriction, whether that be Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, or anything like that. All right, guys, now let's finally wrap up the review. Where could Surfshark finally end up in my review system? Well, that's going to be a 50.28. As of right now, that's right around the number sixth VPN. Um, it's just barely behind NordVPN. NordVPN gets a slight advantage due to having something like a dedicated IP, um, Soxify proxy support, and stuff like that. Um, if, Nor if Surfshark really wanted to do well, I think it could remove some of those trackers on the website, open source the application, get port forwarding, um and yeah that would be a great start alone but also make the one month more affordable use kind of less marketing tricks even if the timer does seem to be authentic right now i would like less timers um and stuff like that 
um, maybe even kind of squish the pricing to make it more consistent for subscribers who subscribe to keep the same price. Um, those would be my preferred things about Surfshark. Otherwise, though, it's a pretty good VPN. The speeds are incredible. Um, the customer support is solid. Um, and the streaming compatibility is very good as well. So anyways, guys, those are my final thoughts on Surfshark. And I'll see you again in the next review very soon.